afternoon, Mets fans. It is Monday, March 27th, and thank you for watching today's edition of Driving with Mr. Met. I am Mr. Met, and I'm going to be continuing my end of spring training, beginning of the regular season uh, discussion about the 2017 Mets. So far, we've talked about the bullpen, the starting rotation, and the infield, and today we're going to talk a little bit about the outfield. So the situation in the outfield for the 2017 Mets is, uh, is a pretty clear one. Uh, I don't think there are any surprises out here for anybody. Uh, in left field, we're going to have our uh, big free agent acquisition uh, the third time. <laughs> uh, Ioannis Cespedes uh, will, be, will be playing left field. Uh, Cespedes has had a terrific spring. He looks like he's in midseason form, uh, batting upwards of 400. Um, he was over 400 until a couple days ago, actually. So Cespedes looks really, really good. He's hit five home runs, 10 or 11 RBIs in the spring. Um, so Cespedes looks like he's ready to go. He will be in left field. In center field, Curtis Granderson, um, the newly minted cleanup hitter, and we'll spend some time later in the week talking about what the lineup might look like. Um, but Curtis Granderson will be the center fielder. And in right field, perhaps the only marginal question um, is uh, Jay Bruce. There was, of course, some d discussion and debate about Michael Conforto starting in right field uh, when there was uh, the question mark about whether Bruce would be traded. Bruce was not traded, and therefore I don't think anyone should be surprised that he's going to be the starting right fielder. And honestly, I'm not in the camp of Bruce should not be on this uh, in the in the starting lineup or on the team. I, I think Bruce belongs on the team. I think he's a legitimate major league hitter. Nobody can argue that point. Um, he's he's got 30 home run power potential, and you need a guy like that in the lineup. You could also say you need a guy who can hit for, for average, which it looks like Michael Conforto might be able to do. But I think if Conforto is not going to get regular at-bats, nobody should be upset about the fact that he's going to start the season and perhaps spend the majority of that of the season in AAA. Now, with the bench players uh, in the outfield being a little bit more of a question, um, there may be a chance that Conforto is on the team. I don't know that it's the best option, though. Uh, over the weekend, Ligaris injured his oblique muscle. Um, I guess earlier today there was some report, or perhaps it was yesterday, there was some report that um, it wasn't as bad as he initially thought, and he felt a lot better. But, you know, obliques are a really touchy thing, and it's sort of like... Once something is strained in there, it's it's going to take a couple of weeks before it's it's completely healed up. So that means that our number four outfielder uh, is no longer going to be available for probably the first 30 days or so of the season. So without Ligaris being the number four outfielder, I think by default it ends up being Michael Conforto. And the problem with that is that it's going to rob Conforto of every day at bats. So the real question that I have about the outfield is, do we forego the fact that Conforto is, without question, the best outfield option uh, beyond the three starters, and we let him stay in AAA where he can get regular at-bats? Or do we say, you know what, he is the best option, he needs to be on the major league uh, roster, and he needs to be the fourth outfielder. And if it means that for 30 days or so, uh, he's going to miss uh, miss out on starting every day and playing every day, so be it. Are, are we looking to better the team or are we looking to better the player? It's a tough one to answer, and I don't know who the right option is if we say no to Conforto. I think it has to be Brandon Nimmo. Unfortunately, he um, also coming off of an injury um, where he hurt his hamstring. So what do we do with that fourth outfielder? That's the only question mark. Um, of course, there's Ty Kelly, who's proven to be uh, sort of a jack-of-all-trades, master-of-none kind of guy. Uh, one of those kind of blue-chip type Mets who ends up showing up and doing okay um, in the Joe McEwing mold. Um, maybe I'm giving Ty Kelly a little too much credit. But anyway, um, what do you guys think? Who should be the fourth outfielder? 
Am I wrong about Jay Bruce? Should he not be in right field to start the season? By the way, 211 batting average this spring for Mr. Bruce. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Uh, or as always, you can hit me up on Twitter at Mr. Underscore Met. Looking forward to hearing your thoughts about the outfield. Uh, later in the week, I will talk about the bench situation. And then finally, we'll wrap it up uh, at the end of the week with the starting lineup. Until then, thank you so much for watching. And as always, let's go Mets.